Hi everyone, so somewhere a bit different today. I'm at a friend's house and I'm just looking after that tank while they're away. So I thought this is a great opportunity to sort of talk about what you should ask people to look for and do when they come and check your fish while you're away or feel free to send this, send this video out to them or if you're about to sort of look after a friend's fish and you're freaking out, hopefully this will give you a few pointers about how to spot things going wrong and what to do to make sure everything runs smoothly while you're away or you're visiting. Hope you enjoy. So one of the first things that comes to my mind when I leave and what I worry about is electrical failure. So whether that's power cuts, uh, filter or heater malfunctioning, even with one of these sort of high-tech planted tanks, your lights fail or the CO2 solenoid fails and you're constantly pumping CO2 into the tank. Any of those sorts of things just freak me out. So it's always good to just ask the person who's looking after your tank to pop over before you leave and talk them through sort of what could go wrong and what to look for when you're when they're visiting. So, so the first thing to show people when you're, they're coming to look after your tank is where your filter flow is. It's a quick, easy way to just check that your filter's flowing and your bacteria is going to be healthy and sorting out any ammonia that's being produced by the fish. So in here, nice and visible, filter outflow is here. You can see it's running quite clearly. And I can get, if I was show, asking someone to look after my tank, I'd just quickly say, all right, here, look at this. Does the flow look similar to this? If it does, everything's probably okay. You don't need to dig any further. I wouldn't really want someone who didn't know what they're doing messing around with my filter if they didn't need to. So over here in the far corner, I've got crouching over a sofa here. There's a glass thermometer. Every tank needs to have some sort of way of checking the temperature of the water without just sticking your hand in and going, oh, that feels warm. So again, this one here, actually, I'll zoom in in a second. This one here has a green sort of band of what a normal tropical aquarium, community aquarium, should sit between. On here it's saying 21 to 27 degrees Celsius. Um, so again, just show, give them the value of the person who's looking after your tank. Give them the value of, of what your tank should be running at. So and that one other thing to think about, or one other, another thing to think about is the actual fish and are they healthy? It's gonna be very difficult for a non-fish keeper to spot sick or dying fish or actually a dead fish hiding in the back of the tank in a, a full planted scape. So perhaps it's a good idea to sort of, one, preempt this and don't introduce anything new to your tank before you go away. That way you're reducing the chance of introducing a disease which could ex rapidly spread throughout your tank while you're away. Uh, secondly is to sort of explain what the behaviours of your fish to them so they don't panic. Obviously in, in this tank you've got, there's quite a lot of loaches and loaches do have a habit of just sitting on the bottom and looking a little bit dead, wonking to one side and yeah. So if you've got any fish that are a bit like that, that might to people who don't do fish, think that they're dead, explain that to them and explain their normal behaviours. Then if they see something that's not like that, they can warn you and let you know. And now when it comes to feeding, a lot of people who don't keep fish will often see fish at the front of the tank and think they're starving and feed them so much more than they need and what you would normally give them. So it's always a good way to pre-weigh sort of weigh out or divvy up the feed for the person to come. So I've got a tube here which says the feed for today and I know that that's how much I feed, I'm not going to feed any extra because that's what I've been asked to do. So if you can do the same, label them for the days of the week or just day one, day two, day three or just maybe just yeah, just have little portions. It's much better and gives you a peace of mind that you know you're not gonna come back to a cloudy tank full of uneaten food all across the bottom because they've been overfed. So yeah, always good to divvy up your food to the portions that you need. And now let's just add a little bit of the feeding video and look at the species in this tank. So there we go, mixture of pellets, small micro pellets, algae wafers and all sorts in the same tube. So it's nice and easy for the person who is feeding. And you can see the fish are going mad and enjoying life. Um, in this tank, there are some neon blue resboras. Um, there are Asian rhominos. There are six banded barbs and snake skin barbs. There's dwarf chain loaches and zebra loaches across the bottom. And I think there's a few cherry shrimps dotted around. There are some 
hill stream loaches, there are some horse face loaches, and there are some upside down catfish. It's a quite a busy tank, but it's huge, and the fish are some of the best quality, colorful fish that I've seen. They've also got some Asian, female Asian rubber nose, which you don't often see in shops. Um, you normally just see the ones that have the bright faces. The females are very plain in color. I'll try and get some photos of them at some point. Um, but you can see all the loaches are coming out now, and all the fish are out feeding and happy. Um, in this tank, plant-wise, you've got an Anubius, which I don't know, it's one of the larger leaved um, species, and it's coming out the top all over, and lots of Java fern windelove. There are also some crips and some lo tiger lotus um, growing across the bottom as well. I think that's about it. It's quite a simple scape, um, but it's really dramatic it? and it makes a really nice corner to this house. You can see all the loaches coming out the bottom to their pellets and wafers. So something I forgot to mention when I was there, and I'll do it as a voiceover over this clip, was that obviously most of the time when we're away, we've still got our mobile phones, we're contactable. But if you're going somewhere and you know you're not gonna be able to be reached, perhaps it would be a good idea to leave the contact details and names of someone with their permission for the person looking after your fish to, to call up or message when there is an emergency and they're really not sure. And they just want a bit of advice. So I hope you enjoyed this really quick video, just sort of how to go about checking on someone else's tank or how to prepare to go on holiday yourself. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments and I'm happy to sort of help. Or if you've got any suggestions, have I missed anything? Is there something that you would check while you're looking after someone else's tank? Let me know in the comments, let everyone else know in the comments so, so we can build up a good amount of knowledge here. Um, so I'm gonna stay and take some pictures of these fish because they're looking really good and I brought my camera stuff with me to, to get some more um, images for Instagram. So follow me over there, subscribe here,